Admiral Thisara Samarasingha is a former Sri Lanka Navy commander. He was the 16th commander of the Sri Lanka Navy and the 21st High Commissioner of Sri Lanka to Australia, New Zealand and the Pacific Islands. He is the current senior consultant of Sinek Campus Malambi. He was educated at Royal College Colombo. He won Royal College colors in athletics as a sprinter and was a senior prefect of Royal College. In 1970, he had the distinction of being a lance corporal in Royal Platoon 1 that won the prestigious Herman Luce Trophy. He achieved the highest position of Regimental Sergeant Major of the National Cadet Corps in 1973 and won the Best Commander's Prize in 1972. He joined the Sri Lanka Navy after completing school as an officer cadet in 1974. He completed his basic training at Britannia Royal Naval College, Dartmouth, as a midshipman and graduated in 1976, winning the Best International Midshipman Award along with appointment as Divisional sub -Lutinian. His career included a wide range of key appointments at sea and ashore, including training in the United Kingdom, India and the United States. In the crucial humanitarian operation, he gave leadership to the Eastern Naval Command in 2007 and to the Northern Naval Command in 2008 before he came to Naval Headquarters in 2009 to be elevated to Commander of the Sri Lankan Navy in July. He was promoted to the rank of Vice Admiral on 15th of July 2008 and on 12th of January 2011 he was promoted to the rank of Admiral. He got many awards including Ranasura Padakkama, Vishta Seva Vibhushane, and Uttama Seva Padakkama. He had a distinguished 36-year career in the Sri Lankan Navy. Good afternoon, sir. To start off this interview, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, good afternoon, Hirvama. Thank you for inviting for the interview. Uh, very briefly, uh, I started my education when I was six years old at Royal College, starting from Royal Primary Junior to College. So that is my education. I hail from a family from down south. Uh, my parents are, father is a government servant and my mother is a government teacher. Uh, I'm in a family of four. I'm the third, the elder sister, elder brother and a younger brother. So my entire schooling career uh, was with Royal College and I entered Royal through a, for the kindergarten uh, from an island-wide competitive ex examination like the uh, scholarship exam that is being held now. And that is how I ended up from Martha to Colombo, Royal and we shifted. So that then after my uh, career at Royal, I uh, joined the Sri Lanka Navy as an officer cadet in 1974. Before that, Royal College found me in employment at Lever Brothers, for which I was there for two months and I shifted to the Navy. 37 years in the Navy uh, was a long career and then I was appointed uh, as the uh, Chief of the Navy, Commander of the Sri Lanka Navy in 2009. I left in 2011 and I was appointed again by, at that time, the Excellency, the President as the Sri Lanka's 21st High Commissioner to Australia, New Zealand and Pacific Islands. So I served almost four years uh, of my uh, diplomatic career and I returned to Sri Lanka in 2015 and since then to date I'm working as a senior consultant of the largest and most diversified private non-state university, Sinek Campus, working with another royalist who is my boss and friend, Captain Ajit Peris. So briefly, that is my background. Thank you, sir. So what exactly made you come to the decision to join the Sri Lankan Navy when you did? Uh, my young age at Royal was 
uh, very much into extracurricular activities, cadeting. Uh, I reached the pinnacle of cadeting career as a regimental sergeant major. My certificate, leaving certificate by principal LDH period says, I'm the first RSM to be produced by Royal uh, in its long history. I played cricket first 11, captain second 11. I did athletics, got my school colors in sprint uh, point to 100 relay. I played a bit of hockey. I was a senior prefect. So all this meant me going to camps, uh, gave me the uh, desire to become an officer cadet. I was very regimental. I was very keen to do the right thing all the time, correctly. Honesty was one of the ingredients that I practiced all along in my life. So my dream was to become an officer cadet. So as a result, I applied for all three uh, forces, Army, Navy, Air Force. I directly went to the Army final interview because I was the RSM uh, of the 3rd Battalion. Uh, however, Navy was faster. They selected me first. Then uh, I had no idea on to very much too many details, but I knew about the Army. So I took the first caller and I joined the Navy. That is how I ended up at the Navy. I, see, I did sir. my A level. I had the opportunity to uh, opportunity to go to uh, uh, with A O level right results to do medicine in Russia, Lumumba University, but I declined that. But I preferred the uh, officer cadetship with the Navy. Thank you, sir. So, sir, what were your perceptions of life in the military and the workings of the service before you joined and then after you joined? Were, the, were those views changed in any way? Uh, if I understood you correct, whether what was my perceptions about the military and what was my perception after? Is that what you're asking? Uh, yes, sir. So, how you perceived the military before you joined and then after you joined, did those perceptions change in any way? And if so, how did they change? Uh, it has not changed in that context. Uh, before, I, as I told you, I was a very uh, hardworking, persevering person who liked to be perfect and doing the thing uh, to the best of my ability and it has to be the best. So uh, all my life I have pursued that and for which I was willing to acquire the training required for position rather than uh, aspiring for positions. I always want to get the best of the best training. So naturally that would take me to higher level. So as a result of that, every bit of training that I did in the Navy, a lot of training. The first was my officer cadet training in Sri Lanka at the Naval and Maritime Academy. Uh, I competed with one of the best batches that you could have uh, whether it's sports or academics so i had the uh, privilege of getting to the top of the class with the sword of honor as a result of that i got a very rare opportunity to go to britannia royal naval college dartmouth in uk first and the only student to go after 18 years and to compete with the best of the world in the UK as a just 20 year old. I was the only student from Sri Lanka, whereas all the other foreigners had two or three in their class. 
So getting on top of that and getting a very prestigious appointment at uh, Britannia Royal Naval College changed my perception. The British royalty was trained alongside me. And uh, that gave me tremendous confidence and discipline. That is where my self-discipline, personal discipline took charge of me. As a young person going to UK with no one to supervise you, I had enough of opportunities to go astray. But my self-defense, my country, my parents kept me on track and I did well. That was my perception in life. Do well, bring credit to your parents and the country. So as a result, my next training in sub lieutenant programs in India, specialist navigation as a 87 in 82 in India, United States Naval War College in 1991 to do Staff College, uh, Hawaii, USA in 2003, and National Defense College as a senior Commodore or a Rear Admiral in India, competing with 100 plus. So all these training were gearing me for higher positions, and I topped the batch in all those programs. So. In this journey, starting from 1981, commanding uh, the short petrol vessel, uh, fighting terrorism was a uh, second nature to me as it went along. At different stages, commanding vessels at sea in combat, rescue, offensive, support, Convoy various aspects of naval life. Of course, risking your men at times and safeguarding your men at all times, but achieving the aim of beating the terrorists, destroying the terrorists, preventing them from attacking us. All those things were very risky things and very uh, need a lot of competence and confidence. You can have all the knowledge and ability, but if you can't do the thing at the right time and the right way to for success, you will be useless. The sea was a different terrain, not like on land. Very unstable condition, changing environment, changing weather, changing sea, suicide attacks. So this Changing environments were very uh, challenging. So competence is making use of your knowledge and skill and deliver whatever you have to do with success. If you are incompetent, you are unsuccessful. Your boat will get hit, your terrorists will get the upper hand and they will do what they want. So all that is there and uh, and believe me, all these aspects guided was guided by my self-discipline. Yeah. Discipline of honesty, integrity, loyalty. That is the discipline. So I had to lead a life still, but with all these challenges, they so saw it has not changed my perception, my attitude my way of doing things even today <clears throat> i'm very proud to say that i follow these ingredients the, the loyalty to your system your country your school your parents your organization then your honesty and integrity then your professional competence and your discipline. So do I maintain this <clears throat> throughout even to date I do that. Thank you sir. 
Sir, you were once the High Commissioner to Australia, New Zealand and the four Pacific Islands during a period from 2011 to 2015. So, sir, can you tell us a little bit about your time in that diplomatic role? Yes, a naval officer is always a diplomat. Because naval officer operates at sea beyond 12 nautical miles beyond our territorial waters. Our way of uh, showing the flag going from one country to the other, meeting merchant marine at sea and uh, dealing with the naval officers uh, operating in this common terrain that is the sea, lands are different from country to country. But she is not different. And also, uh, when you command a vessel with 100 men on board or more or less, you are at sea with them for uh, almost 25 to 30 days. Eating, fighting, drinking, recreating, doing all what is required within that maybe 100 meters or 75 meters length. It's a different perception, different way of leadership, different way of team building. The captain and the junior most sailor is at the equal distance from the enemy. That shot can come to you or to your sailor or your other officer. But in the other, with due respect to other forces, it's different in the other area. So this fact of leadership beyond your limits was very much useful in my diplomatic career. When you take a diplomatic posting, the most important thing is bring the two countries together. If the countries were at a different level, you must get it at a higher level. The friendship between the country, cordiality between the countries, the relationship between the two countries should be raised to a higher level, a better level, closer level, deeper level. That is number one task of a diplomat. Then the next was to improve the economic relationship, get the benefits out of that country for our own country, your mother Lanka. How could your relationship improve the level of life of Sri Lankans? in Sri Lanka and uh, lastly there are people of Sri Lankan origin living in Sri Lanka in those countries and their benefit has to be part of it so when I went to Australia the just after the conflict there was a lot of bad taste in many of the western world who were unwillingly and unwillingly but intentionally with vested interest trying to discredit our military and discredit our country and the leadership. The most brutal terrorist in the world was the terrorist that we fought. They were told that they were saying that they cannot be beaten. But we beaten in a humanitarian operation to rescue the population of our country who were kept under gunpoint for many days and weeks. So this story went against that we did brutal killing, genocide, you were creating various, the uh, smarting from defeat. The people who funded the terrorists were trying to throw stones at us. I had to counter that. There was a Geneva Human Rights Convention which was being flourished by various uh, Western countries and Australia was co-sponsoring that. So I had to take uh, Australia tactfully and honestly to convince them to realize that all these are myths. These are words of people who funded this and uh, wanted the separate state in our country because they were giving the votes in those countries in various countries. I'm not going to mention names. 
even today they are smarting <coughs> they were expecting to have a separate country called ilam that they could not thanks to our political leadership the current president and the previous president who were leading us and our military who shred 20000 plus people shred their lives now compare today's what sri lanka after 14 years of the conflict <coughs> and uh, what other countries you know who had terrorism 20 years occupation of western most powerful power then in the middle east still they say the war was over but bombs are going off people are dying we don't have a single death except for the sunday uh, bombing easter sunday bombing a single death. that is called peace that is called uh, honorable peace that is called uh, real uh, winning the conflict because the jatna and other areas and in colombo people are not just dying because of terrorism development has taken place land has been we don't have refugee camps we have no rehabilitation camp we have no whatever the camps they call it millions and millions of refugees are in camps in other countries that is why they are smarting our country is moving to a development they want to stop that so this i had to complaints the australians and i did that with i addressed the parliament for one and a half hours in the committee room convinced the then leadership and they withdrew from the geneva co sponsor in 2014 so those people are very good people as long as they have been told the truth so new zealand australia vanuatu pn papua new guinea fiji solomon islands were the countries that they came in strength in 2013 commonwealth heads of government meeting and supported our country so we need to understand this we carried the entire country's population over to safety we carried them over they are in safe land today so it is that is my experience in australia they were very receptive to rational explanation and they are still maintaining that and today uh, we have to respect and that experience is enormous to me in my life and in any future endeavor Thank you sir. So your journey through the Sri Lankan armed forces is long and as I'm sure it's very really fi- is filled with stories and experiences that made you who you are today. So sir how exactly did your time in the service affect you and develop you as an individual? As an individual uh, as I did explain to you uh, the Hirupama uh, uh this is a steady progress that I made. the discipline that i got from of course first from royal and the my uh beloved navy uh is that do things on a level and always maintain a very high bar so what i was inculcated in the navy inculcated in the uh, royal college where i did no communal differences racial differences religious differences community differences was not known to us even today it's not known to us when i was in australia it was all my uh 
non strongly friends who uh, very close to me because they were my good friends even today so they after being the sri lankan national always with the military parade every citizen of our military elected by the people because it was their decision and the military action that have saved the lives today they enjoy all this good life today without life of course we have other challenges but you are getting up in the morning so that is my humble request to everyone i would like every citizen going in front of the military and respecting them you have an obligation you have a responsibility to do that otherwise you are being ungrateful you are not giving the gratitude that they <coughs> deserve what they went through none of the people will ever know so for our country to flourish as a <coughs> country in harmony we have temples alongside kovils alongside churches all are alongside mosques which country has that but they are still living in harmony intermarriages so these are normal part of life this is what is required for harmony and uh, in a on a day like independence day is for us to uh fly the flag honor the flag flag is representing every community every religion every race so keeping that in mind i thank you for giving this opportunity and uh, making this event and mother sri lanka club of royal i am a, a honorary working uh, committee member of that company and thanks to uh dr janaki kurupu who is the spearheading mother sri lanka i must thank her on this special day for giving that leadership unbelievable leadership to mother sri lanka which she we are bringing north east south west together through the children who are not disturbed or corrupt or spoil so buddha take that forward take that flag forward and see that your school is the ideal school to bring harmony thank you very much thank you thank you for your time sir